Hello everyone, how are we all? Um, happy Friday! Unfortunately, I'm not coming to you with part, I think it's part six, of our pine dresser. Um, it rained all day yesterday. It is now foggy and raining on and off today. I just need to stay on the top and we're done. Um, but that's not happening. <laughs> So we're here instead. Um, and I thought while we brought in a pile of furniture Wednesday? Wednesday yeah, it was Wednesday. A uh, truckload of furniture that I um, am selling on behalf of a client. So we do sell on commission still. And I need to do some staging. I just want to sort of churn them all out, get all the photos done so that I can stage over the next week or so. Um, I, I do like to space out my listings a little bit. But... I thought this was a great opportunity to show you all sort of my staging props and then how I do the staging as well. Uh, we've got quite a few of you who have sort of been hobbying for a little while, but now you get into the stage where you want to start selling. And I've had a few of you message and ask if I would sort of show you what I recommend props wise, how I stage, etc. as well. Um, I think I showed this like three years ago but I haven't sort of shown it since so I thought this was a great opportunity and now all my staging items are in one nice little stack easy accessible pile I thought this was a great opportunity so um for staging you don't have to have a lot of stuff I don't my collection's quite small um I mainly keep my collection small because otherwise I get quite overwhelmed when I'm staging so there's a few key pieces that I recommend everybody have. Um, but after that, uh, think about the type of furniture you're doing as well um, and the style you're doing. I do a lot of different styles, so I don't necessarily have all my props leaning towards one style, but sort of have a play around, do things that you love um, and go from there. I generally, for most of my staging, I do go by odd numbers so i'll have three of three items on a piece or i'll have seven items on a piece but i won't have like six or four items on a piece um so i always do odd numbers but apart from that that's really my only rule i just sort of what looks best um there are a few key pieces though so i thought i'd sort of just go through roughly some of my favorite pieces i'm not going to go through every single one but i've got three shelves here of staging pieces I do have um, a few pieces that I absolutely love that I actually keep at home um, on display and then I just bring in if I think a piece needs that. But really, this is what you see here. This is what I use. Um, and you don't have to spend a lot of money either. I've, look all up, I've probably spent a hundred bucks, if that, over the years. Most of these pieces have been found, um, whether hard rubbish or I've gotten them from op shops. Uh, some items have come in on my husband's e-waste business, like this lamp. Uh, I really, I haven't paid much at all, and you don't have to pay a lot for your staging items. So, um, get that idea out of your head straight away. You do not have to pay a lot for staging items. Um, they, they don't have to be anything fancy either. Uh, they can be a little bit chipped or broken, and I'm going to show you that in a second. So, cheap is fine for your staging items. You just want a little bit of a variety, but again, it depends on what kind of furniture you're doing. Excuse me, two seconds, I'm going to cough. <coughs> Sorry, hang on, two seconds. I think, I think I'm starting to get the kids cold just a little bit. My throat's just got that itch in it today and it won't go away. These water bottles are crap. They just crinkle. Absolute rubbish. I can't even tell you where they came from because all of the labels fell off. All right, so let's have a look. I'm going to start with books. Books, I recommend everybody has. You do not need as many as what I do. I do have quite a few. In all fairness, though, about half of these are actually for sale um, on eBay. We list... Um, we get like a lot of books in, so we sell them on eBay, the better quality, higher value ones. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Um, 
So, and the ones that were for sale were in a box, but I needed those colors a few weeks ago. I've had a few like bookcases and that sort of thing lately. Um, and I wanted specific colors, so I took them out of the box and then they all got jumbled up. Um, so now they're just on my shelf. My shelf is the new box. So, the books, um, I prefer, and I think they look heaps better, are the old school hardcovers. Um, they just look nicer. The pages look better than your current modern ones. Um, and they've got like, they've got a bit of age to them. They just look nice. So I like to have a few different colors. It's taken me quite a few years to build up colors. Um, red, dime a dozen. You can find red books everywhere. Um, but, and blue, fairly common. But getting into your, <coughs> sorry, your yellows and greens, they're getting a bit harder to find. For books, price point, I never pay more than $5 for a book. Most of the times, um, you can pick these up for like 50 cents or less. Um, we get a lot uh, for free. My husband's one of those people that um, he goes and picks one thing up and people start throwing things at him. I don't know why. He's just very good at... Um, I think he talks too much, to be honest. <laughs> but he gets books thrown at him a lot. Um, most of them, there's not a lot of value, but some of them do. So, before... I always recommend looking them up on eBay. If you want to resell them, absolutely go for it. We're a big fan of that here. Um, you can paint these books as well, and they do look quite nice painted. So, um... If you want to paint them, just look them up first. Don't paint over a hundred dollar book. <laughs> um, few different colours, different sizes as well. So when they're sitting on your shelf, you've got a nice selection. I don't tend to go too big. So different heights. And then also, where's a better one? Different thicknesses as well. So most of the time, I actually put my books facing this way in my photos. Um, so you still get a little bit of the colour, but I like the pages. Sometimes the full spines and the colour can be a bit much as well. Um, so books. So stacking up or laying down. I like to do two to three books laying down. And then I'll grab something like candles. Where's my little duck? I picked this duck up at a garage sale for 50 cents. Things like that nice little stacks so books are brilliant i use them on i don't know 75 percent of my staging pieces now i've got a specific color order here and we need to get them in the color order. <laughs> keeps me organized <coughs> so books are brilliant it's okay the last time i dropped a duck i um oh i smushed his nose last time i dropped one of my ducks i um he exploded. <laughs> Don't do that. Right. Um, on the list of ducks, I like to have some timber with my staging. So I've got a few different items. I like to keep things fairly vintage and quite neutral as well. But I like timber because it brings a bit of warmth. So we've obviously got my duck. Yeah, I haven't done anything to him as well. You can see his... He's, he's showing his age. There's a few watermarks on him. He's gorgeous. Right? I've got this little turned bowl. I like the little nook out of it. I don't use it a lot. There's one on that side too. But it's nice if you just want a little bit of warmth. I also have this big chunky turned thing. I think I got it from a garage sale for 50 cents. I don't know what it is. Occasionally I stick a candle in it. Most of the time. And it's nice lying down as well just for a bit of texture as well. So again, like all of that, I've paid like a dollar for them. So you don't have to spend a lot. I also have a couple of bigger. These I actually brought to sell in the store and ended up keeping them for myself. These whitewash, these are modern ones. Um, they're w D W B H brand. You can actually find them. I found lately, I, they popped up not long ago actually. Um, on like capture the day and that sort of thing. So they're a little bit more expensive, but again, I like the timber. Sorry, hang on. No, all good. Right. Um, 
Next, candles. I love a good set of candles. I just go for plain, ooh, sit up there, plain white pillar candles, and I do do a few different sizes. Um, I have found so far, and I haven't like I haven't looked that hard, but IKEA are very very cheap. A um, few different sizes, different thicknesses. Oh, sorry, that that's the same size, same thickness. <laughs> different sizes, different thicknesses. <coughs> um, I like their little four pack of candles as well and then I've even got some like this one was on clearance a couple of taller ones as well just the plain white ones they don't have to cost a lot um, keep an eye out like garage sales and that sort of thing I see a lot like around here I see a lot of candles in garage sales as well so candles I love because they're white they're nice and plain but they look really nice in photos um, one of my candles as well I've actually still got some of these ones this one there was a reason oh yeah this one was sitting in our front window at our old shop and it melted a little bit so it became mine um but i like again the brown um or the amber i like a bit of warmth so and this looks really nice in photos i also have um occasionally if you want a slightly different shape i've got diffusers as well which are nice so i like to play with my shapes a little bit too um, most things are sort of round, but sometimes it's nice to bring in um, a little bit of a, like a different shape. For plants, I love the IKEA little, I actually pulled this apart the other day, the, I can't pull it apart again, the IKEA little um, things, that's the label on it. Um, they're really good quality they look really nice in photos as well like they they're pretty good we know what fake plants some of them can look pretty crap these ones are really quite nice I also got these stems um, from Ikea again and um, I've got three of those I find like that's a good good little bunch of most things that looks like enough so Ikea for this sort of stuff it's so cheap and it's um oh no I've got four of those sorry oops Ooh. four of these um nice little bunch I find IKEA for the fake plants is excellent. If you've got one near you, you can order online as well. And they're fairly reasonable with their shipping. I've also got, let me find somewhere to put them for a second. Oh, I've got another one down there. This one's one of my favorite ones. You'll see that one popping up a lot. Again, I think it's the same name and everything, but you will find it in store. Um, I've also got, I got some of these some flowers from I think these ones came from like AliExpress they're really really cheap they're sold by the stem they're I think they're like two dollars a stem I just gave them a bit of a steam they look beautiful and I use these a lot <coughs> uh, and I've got a few different colors I've got up very top I've got some pink I've got some little ones these ones are nice and small and they're a little bit more delicate as well so a few different options I've got like four options. I very rarely use the pink. I mainly use the white. I have got, sorry guys, we are open today and there's a lot of car noise out there. Um, I've also got, oops, some black leaves. I know it's a little bit unusual, but they look really, really good in photos. So again, I think they were AliExpress, a couple of bucks a stem. And I had one more thing, where'd it go? I don't know where it went. I ha oh, over here. I've also got these ones I brought years ago. These It's only two stems, but these are like a eucalyptus. And I got these from Spotlight. So a few really simple options. Again, I like the individual stems because you can put them all together. Um, and these two, these are such a good investment. Uh, one was 10, one was 15. They were on clearance from Big W. Again, you don't have to spend a lot. I see these all the time at op shops as well. I've been seeing them a lot lately. Um, but they look good and I like the different heights. I like the shape. And they're nice and neutral. And they go with pretty much any style again. So we've got a few different options. And then so this is just sort of what I use a lot. Um, I recommend you have a really nice white or off-white vase of some description this one is my all-time 
favorite. I actually found this on Hard Rubbish and it is worse for wear because it's got a massive crack and hole in it. I still use it, I just face it this way instead. Um, absolutely love it. It's actually a, oh hang on, is this the one or is there a different one? No, this one's a different, no, this one's Austria. I have a West German one somewhere. I don't know where it went. Hmm. Oh no, I think that one's at home. I've got another one that's similar. But this one, you'll see this in my photos a lot. I use a lot. Um, a really nice shaped white vase. Not too tall, because when you put your foliage in it, it gets, like you're adding quite a lot of height. So on some things, this is too big already. But when you start to add your foliage, you, it's like, it's quite tall. So don't go too big. But a nice, this is like a nice sort of medium size, I think. And then, what else do we have? I love a good set of vintage pitchers or milk jugs. I've got two different colours. Um, I do like to use them both together as well. <coughs> and then, um, little, I call them knickknacks. So these are my little fiddly things. They sort of just... When a piece just needs something else. So, we bring in my little birds. I've got two of them, I've got a black one. This one was actually my husband's when I met him. And this one I got from one of like the $2 stores for like a buck. And really simple, got a little bit of detail, but they're not like in your face. So they're really, really nice way. Just add, when you just need that little bit of it, something extra, but you don't wanna add too much. I think that's sort of about it of what I wanted to show you here. Oh, and um, I'll show you the other ones out there. Some sort of metal as well to complement your handles. Sometimes you want to pull those colours of your handles up. These little brass pots, I got a garage sale for a couple of bucks. They do pop up every now and then. They're normally quite expensive, but I love these. I've got a whole collection of them. Um, and that's sort of it. <coughs> I do 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 quite quite a lot of like kitchen themed items um i do a lot of kitchen um cabinets meat safes that sort of thing so i do like a set of canisters this is like a set of three they're quite nice hello i'll be there in a minute um it's just my husband it's fine um so i like and that's something very specific to me. I do a lot of kitchen items, so therefore, and meat sex, that sort of thing. So I've got like, um, up the top there, I've got a cake serving thing, display thing as well. Um, so have a play around. You don't need to spend a lot with your um, staging items, as I said. Uh, books, candles, a nice vase. You can use the same thing over and over again. I do it all the time when I'm doing stage like what I'm about to do today um I'll like I'll pull out those same few items over and over again and they'll be in a slightly different configuration but I do use them a lot let me take you out I'm going to show you the piece I'm going to stage first and just sort of show you how I'm going to stage it I suppose and I want to show you two more items that I have that I love that I use a lot you don't necessarily need but I do um I do use them a lot so this is my staging wall. If you've been following along, uh, when we moved in, this was just orange pine and I painted it white. Ooh. <coughs> Hang on, two seconds, let me grab my drink. My throat is so itchy today. So we've got our beautiful staging wall. You want something fairly neutral. You don't want really busy. Um, I've staged in front of bricks before. It looks amazing. Concrete walls look great. Just something fairly neutral somewhere where you can um, where you can stand back a little bit as well so you don't want to be like cramped up against the piece when you're taking photos so try and find a spot where you can stand back I know it can be really hard when you're working from home even if you're out in the garden and you're using the fence that's fine um, just find something that works a white wall I think still looks best this one's a little bit busy because it's a bit rustic but um, it's working really well for my photos. It's giving me a bit of branding as well. And it is working um, quite well locally here for me when I'm posting my photos. Bye, baby boy. <laughs> He's watching me. Um, so, wall piece. This piece is a commission. Uh, sorry, not a commission. A, um, I'm selling it on consignment for one of my 
Very clever ladies. She is just sort of starting. She's, been, she's extremely talented. She has got be, like really natural talent. Um, she's doing a lot of like chippy, rustic, grungy pieces. And she's just, she's just worked it out straight away. She's just got so much natural talent. But she's doing a couple of plainer pieces just so they sort of sell a little bit so she can um, buy more supplies and buy more furniture. We're taking truckloads of furniture to her because she's got this big, beautiful house that she's trying to turn into this amazing space that she loves. So we're doing lots of little pieces um, here and there. So I've got this beautiful piece. I'm pretty sure this is painted in acacia. Now, I haven't unwrapped it yet, so let me unwrap it. The end of my over there. Um, we brought all these back the other day from the other side of Heathcote. It was like over an hour drive. Um, and because I'm going in the truck, we just wanted to make sure that the paint wasn't going to get damaged. So they are wrapped. Oh, right. Let me get this bit off. I hate using plastic, but sometimes it's just the best option for something like this. So it's absolutely beautiful. It was a fine sideboard. She's actually done like a faux timber finish on top. Uh, it's a nice solid piece. And let me get, oh, where are we? Let me get it off the dollies. I recommend a good set of dollies. They do make your life easier. It was like five bucks and I absolutely love it and I've been using it a lot. I think I'm going to put it with this out. Oh, hang on. We've got a baby. Hey, baby. <laughs> so, we've got our artwork. I'm probably going to hang it on the wall. I just want to sort of show you pulling it together. Let me grab. I'm gonna grab our bars of white allowance because I think they go quite well with it. And again, just bringing up um, some natural tones with it as well. We've got quite a dark top, so we're sort of just trying to pull it together a little bit. Let me adjust the camera so you've got a slightly better view because at the moment you're off center and you're a bit high. Let me bring you down. Oh, where are we? There we go, a little bit of a better view where we're working with. So I don't know why, I like to have my tallest item on the right and go down. So I like to do that. I don't know why, it's just something I've always done. I think it looks better. I don't know if it does, but I think it does. Let me grab uh, one couple, couple of books. Um, with it and then start to play around. I'm not a professional at this. I still have days where this just does not work. But it sort of gets to a point too where you've done a lot of pieces so you can work out what, what works and what doesn't. I think, is my drill in here? No, my drill's over in my husband's shed. So let's just move our artwork for a second. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna hang it on the wall. Let's just pop it out of the road just for a minute. We've got our Beautiful thing of flowers. Now I am useless at flower arranging. I have I have discovered that. 
my mother is, a, well, is trained as a florist. She doesn't work as one anymore, but... Um, there we go. I just sort of shove it in. <laughs> so I'm actually thinking this is a bit, we're quite narrow, and I'm thinking that's a little bit fat. So, uh, it's just feeling, let me bring you a bit closer and show you what I mean. I think I want to switch. Let me bring you. I hope this is helpful for those of you trying to sell. See how there's like only like a hand width? It's quite a narrow piece. I just feel like this is a little bit fat. So we're going to switch it for... Let me sit you down. Sorry. There we go. Right. We're going to switch it out. I'm going to do the taller one, I think. Um, so I'm going to do the taller one, I think. I think my white bars have sort of got the same issue. Oh, come on. I'd switch it out, except these don't want to come out of the bars. I just sort of wedge them in there. I don't like to cut the stems because I then, of course, always need it taller. But, where are we? Come on, there we go. I just sort of curve them up and shot them in and hope for the best. I think this one will be better. See? Curved them up, shoved them in. Pass me on. Right. Right. Again, shove them in, hope for the best. I think that looks better. I don't think my bars is the right choice. Let me sit that there. So I've got those, and then I've got two books. So I've got some more neutral ones. I don't want to bring in greens. I don't want to bring in reds or blues. So I've got like a yellowy one, and this one. Actually, it, it is almost a green, but it's like a darker one. And I think I'm going to pop them this way around as well so the spines are facing the wall. This, this handle at the back. I like the, like my tall skinny one. Tall skinny, but short fatty, and then my little skinny fatty. No, hang on. Little skinny short one. <laughs> Studio this morning and get everything in the right spot. I like it, but the bars isn't doing it for me. So we're going to try. I'm going to try with this white one. Let's just see if this works a bit better. And this is really just like sometimes you'll just nail it straight away. Other times, and like this, I'm not naturally talented with this at all. I do really struggle. And I'll probably still play with this afterwards as well. Something's not working for me and I don't know what it is. Some, and it, this might be one of those days where just none of this works. It doesn't matter what I do, actually. I like that better. What am I thinking? And this, and this is why I like having my shelves like really accessible now too. Because I can sort of look out and see what I've got. And, um, I don't want to bring in any more like vases or jugs. I'm thinking, what am I thinking? Okay, let's do that. Let's grab another couple of books. So I've just grabbed, I know these are green, but I've just grabbed another couple. 
I'm just wondering if we should try for would have been embarrassing yes yeah odd number always catches the eye I do uh, yeah I do agree four five six seven eight there's eight I did like this green book in there hang on do I have it Standing back here, we are off center going that way. We want to go back that way a little bit. When you go to start taking photos, you'll notice it's a lot darker in your photos than what you want it to be. I don't like to correct the overall brightness of my photos too much because I find it does throw out the colours. So instead, I have, and like I brought these five years ago, a set of photography lights. So they have got a massive bulb in them. You can normally pick them up on Amazon for like 50 to 100 bucks for a set. Um, they are pretty cheap. Every now and then you can get them secondhand as well. They've got a big bulb in them. Put your covering over on the front. It just diffuses the light a little bit so it's not so harsh and glary. Um, if you are, if you have a mirror on your piece, tip it so it gets the roof. Or um, if you have artworks with glass in them, take the glass out. Um, because it catches those reflections, you can't see the artwork, it does impact your photos a little bit. So mirrors, facing towards the roof as much as you can. If you can't, just make sure whatever they're sort of reflecting isn't like your pile of dirty dishes in the sink sort of thing. Um, if you're doing it in the bedroom, get your bed or something, or you can, you can get fancy, you can go in and edit the image and take that out or just blur it. That works well. I've sort of done a bit of everything, so do whatever you like. So you just... I'm just using one light at the moment and I'm finding it's plenty. We are very, very well lit in here. I've actually got a, um, hang on, I don't think the power box turned on. Um, I've got skylights right here, so it's brilliant. But if you're not that lucky and it is a bit darker, these lights make such a difference. Why don't I have any? <laughs> on. Oh, right. I don't think. 
think Facebook's going to be kind enough to, show, to sort of show us the difference here. Oh no, that might, just a little bit. But this is staging, really easy. I say it's easy, it's easy now. It wasn't easy when I first started. I, I still doubt myself constantly. <coughs> but if you get yourself a nice little tub, get a few books, few candles, a white vase. Um, I do like the white flowers or some green foliage. Most pieces, you can put something together with like just a small selection of things and you'll be fine. If that, and then yeah, slowly build up your thing. As you go, you'll work out what you like, what you don't like, and you'll get rid of things and you'll replace them with other things. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Op shops and garage sales are your best friend. If you um, see hard rubbish piles, stop, have a look. Uh, one of those green vases that I showed you just before, I picked up off a hard rubbish pile around the corner. It was filthy, brought it home, gave it a clean. Yes, it's got chips and cracks and etc. My vase there has a massive chip out, a massive hole in it, um, but it's still fine for this sort of thing. And it looks a little bit rustic as well, so it works really, really well. I think that's it. I can't take photos while I'm on a live, unfortunately. Oh, actually, let me show you. I tell people all the time, get down lower in your photos. Let me show you what I mean as well. I'm gonna turn the camera around, maybe, if it works. Oh. Okay, so don't take your photos up like this. See how it tilts forward? You need to get nice and low. You don't wanna go so low though that you're cutting off like the bottom of my vase and that, I've cut it off. So you wanna go just nice and even with the top as much as you can. Obviously, if you've got a taller piece, that's harder to do. But just try and level it out as much as possible. So your first photo, your second photo, I like to have one off to the side and sort of really showing the side of the piece. There might be a bit of detailing there and just showing that it's painted down there as well or it's been finished down there. And then I come in. This is exactly what I do. I come in, I get one from this side of my top. I come across, I get another one. I like to go a little bit lower on my second photo. I'll come across, I'll take a photo inside the drawers. Even if I haven't painted them, I tend, tend to take a photo. Then I come down, I open a door, I step back, I get nice and even, and I do something like that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do for this piece. So I hope that was helpful as well. If I've got nice handles like this piece, a beautiful, I'll try to come in and I'll do something like that, or I'll do something like this. So you've got sort of that close-up photo. Sometimes when you come down and you'll notice it on your camera, when you come down and do that, and you can actually see it a little bit now, it changes the colour. So try and keep it up because it's using your phone or whatever you're using. I just use my iPhone. It's using that white wall. Hang on, where are we? It's using the wall. It's using all of this as a reference point for the colour down here. So when you cut all that off, the colour down here is going to change because it doesn't have that reference point. Um, but whereas when I go back up here, that's the true colour. Did you see how that changed? So keep that in mind as well. Apart from that, if I've got a piece that's a little bit difficult to get the colour of, I'll always try and get one photo that's as close as possible. I'll put it as my like second photo, unless my first photo is the best one. And I'll say in the description, see second photo for true colour best way to do it and then don't forget your measurements either I normally I measure and I take a photo of the measuring tape and then I'll go off do something else and then when I'm ready to stage it and uh, when I am ready to list it I'll just use the photos as my reference point as well I find that's the easiest way so that I don't forget measurements that's it so this one I'm pretty certain is acacia in pure eco silk it's absolutely stunning um, I'm not sure what she's used on top, actually. I'm going to double check. But we're selling this one on behalf of one of my amazing clients. She's a very, very clever lady. Um, I can't remember how much we said this one was going to be. I think, I'm thinking like $4.95. I think it's beautiful. It's a really, really well-sized piece as well. So if you're interested, let me know. That's it from me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully... <coughs> Hopefully this weather clears up. I um, filled in a few more holes on my little piece here. So I'm going to clean that up and do uh, just a light coat of paint. I won't show that. Um, and then we're going to sand the top. But today, 
is freaking miserable. It's just crap weather. This isn't fun at all. Um, it's freezing cold. My heat is on its way. I've got tracking, so hopefully it arrives soon. All right, that's it from me today. Haru, have a good day, and I will see you all next week. Bye, everyone.